Hello Virgos, welcome to your November. So you have the Three of Wands, the Ten of Cups, the Queen of Swords, the King of Rods, the Death card, the Wheel of Fortune, Five of Pentacles, Page of Rods, Justice, Reverse, and also the Seven of Cups. So both of these cards are in the reverse position. I'm going to pull out one more. The Devil in the Reverse, which is a good card. And it's a good card to end on that note. So Virgos, let's see what is in store for you here. Okay, so let's, I'm going to put this aside and then we can talk about that in a little bit. Um, it seems to me as if uh, you are starting out with this month, looking back at your past, and it's funny because um, Pisces, was it, yeah, Pisces were doing the same thing. A lot of past energy, a lot of um, situations where thoughts of the past, hurts, pains, disappointment, and things like that from the past, are affecting our ability to fully be engaged and emotionally present in our present day okay so there's a lot of backward looking energy but all of that is basically coming to an end so I feel that you know when it comes to relationship when it comes to work situations that haven't really gone the way that we want we are a little bit uh, scared and fearful about moving forward into the future and I feel that a lot of you might have invested something might have like um, might have like formulated plans with somebody from your past and the pan the plans didn't pan out the way that you'd hope because the other person were not um, trustworthy okay so this is a situation that is you f you still feel very reluctant about forming new plans and forming new associations and even trusting that whatever you have in your present right now and the people that are around you in your present moment are completely trustworthy. So this is a, a, all a matter of, you know, once burned, twice shy type of situation. But I definitely feel here, we do have a threesome type of situation. This can potentially be, you know, getting involved with one person who might be involved with somebody else, or being fearful about getting yourself in a situation where you put so much trust and faith in a partnership, work partnership or relationship partnership, and not have it pan out the way that you'd want because there are too many people involved and too many people that you have to cater to. So you're a little bit hesitant about this, but I do feel we are starting out here with the Three of Wands. It does of emotional fulfillment. It's the epitome of, you know, grand total happiness where everything is going right in your life and you don't have to worry about how things are going to look tomorrow because you know it's going to be great. So this is hope for the future. This is emotional fulfillment, everything that you've dreamed of and wished for. And I do feel for a lot of you, it might be a brand new relationship because what I'm sensing at the center of this spread here, we have the Queen of Swords as well as the Five of Pentacles. The Five of Pentacles, usually when I do a reading for somebody, um, it indicates a karmic relationship. In the upright position, it can be a, a very long established friendship where both parties take care of one another. Okay, In the reverse position, and especially with this deck, and this is a new deck as you can see that I am trying out, it has a different connotation, but I do sense in this situation, it's a it's a relationship. If you are involved with an air sign, um, this can be you know male female. It's a Gemini Aquarius Libra. If you are involved with a, an air sign in a love romantic relationship, I do feel that the Five of Pentacles is a good card to get in the love front because it indicates two people who are scrapping away their pretenses and trying to work together as a unit. Because no matter what, they she's nur she's nursing him. So whatever he's been through, you know, whatever battle scars or whatever dire situation he is in emotionally or even physically, she's there for him. Um, it could be construed as one-sided, but I do feel in the reverse, it might indicate that the um, the sympathy empathy and even you know that ability to relate to one another is going to start to flow both ways so it's not going to be one-sided 
all right? And the thing about the Queen of Swords here is that Queen of Swords are very, very blunt. They're very direct. They are true seekers, and they don't really tolerate a lot of excuses. So if you are involved with an air sign who has, you know, these characteristics, who's um, a little bit argumentative, who could be, you know, difficult, and who who picks, who picks nitpicks on technicalities. So a lot of signs say that, you know, Virgos um, are nitpicky. But I do feel that when you're dealing with a Queen of Swords, which is, you know, an air sign, male or female, they are very um, organized, they are very logical, they're very rational, so they're, they come across as somebody who's a little bit cold and distant, okay? So what's coming in is that both of these cards indicate to me that you are going to have to put your defenses down. You're, you can't wall yourself up like this. Or your partner is going to start to put their defenses down, and you both can approach one another in, from a place of mutual trust and respect and rapport. So I definitely feel that a channel of communication is coming, is going to open up between you and a very significant love relationship in your life that will allow you the, this opportunity for great emotional fulfillment where you feel that fortune is on your side and you feel as if you don't have to fight so hard. You have a team player. You have somebody on your team who's rooting for you or at least who's alongside you as a result of it you're feeling quite good and you're able to let go of the pain and the hurts from the past in order to proceed and have a better future with this person. So I definitely feel a lot of hopefulness coming through for the first two two weeks of the month, okay? Um, the second two weeks, it's a good energy as well, but it's different. I, I do feel like a turnaround, not for the worse or for the better, but it, it's just the, a shift in the energy so that you might want to be careful um, you hire this person for a reason, so let him or her give you their expertise, okay? So this is a situation where you pretty much have to take the back seat here. So that would be my advice. So once this situation ends, that's when your life begins, and that's when you're going to, you know, be able to exhale, and you're going to start to feel like, okay, things are on the upswing. I don't have to go back to this legal issue anymore. My life is, is now... You know, I have a clean slate. I have a new person in my life that I can continue with. So a lot of you might be transitioning from, you know, a divorce situation to a new person. Or a lot of you might be dating a new person while you're waiting for the, divor the verdict on the divorce or separation. So there's an element of one thing ending or one thing beginning. Concurrently, another thing is ending. So you're, you're running two parallel things. Well, you're running two things that are, you know, on, on parallel time frames here. So good for you, but ideally, I would say, you know, let one thing end first before you start something new. Otherwise, it can create jealousies. It can also create um, an unstable foundation. So I, I do feel that's what's happening here because the people are in the reverse position, so I do feel there's a little bit of a conflict of interest, possibly even communication problems, but I do sense it's going to sort itself out. But you know, ideally, we aim for one thing ending while important in your life, no matter who that is, is going to be required of you, okay? At the end of this month, whatever illusions, whatever hasn't worked for you, whatever um, projects that you were trying to get off the ground and you know, and if it didn't come to fruition because you were waiting on contracts, you were waiting on signatures, you were waiting and waiting, all of those things are being scrapped away from your life because the seven of, pe um, of cups here in the reverse position does indicate that false choices are fading away and we end up with the real thing, okay? On top of that, like I said, I pulled out this is the um, devil card in the reverse position. So you're no longer in bondage to the old. You're in a good phase in your life. You also have a new beginning here with the death card. You also have the wheel of fortune here. You also have the card. Uh, it's all about letting pretenses go 
and approaching a relationship or a partnership in a more authentic manner. So all of these things are very, very positive. They are incredibly positive. You also have, you know, the card that indicates the apex of the emotional human experience. So this is a very, very good card. It's the Ten of Cups. You're going to be starting this month feeling quite ecstatic. So Virgo, time to get comfortable with one another enough where you can put down your walls, okay? So I do feel an element of time here with the Wheel of Fortune. It's going to be required of you to take the time and spend it with whoever it is that you feel you love, okay? Because we have the Ten of Cups and then this couple here with the Wheel of Fortune. And we have a woman who is potentially, you know, in need of love and affection because she seems a little bit cold, all right? So take some time off and spend time with your significant other. This is going to be a very spectacular month, Virgos. Take care of yourself.